It is time for another review. Hello guys, welcome back to Beyond the Realms and today I'm going to be reviewing the Blu-ray um, from Blue Underground entitled The Nesting. Um, if you saw unboxing video I did last week, you'll know that uh, David Zombie Food 2 was uh, very generous and sent this to me as a gift. Um, I'd never heard of the film before, uh, like at all, which is kind of surprising because you know there's a lot of films that I've heard the name but just never seen it, never got around to watching it. But I don't recall ever even hearing of this film whatsoever. Um, but basically, it tells a story of a woman named uh, Lauren Cochran. Uh, played by Robin Groves and um, basically she lives in a city uh, she's um, an author she's suffering from writer's block and uh, she starts to experience agoraphobia and um, it's you know agoraphobia can be kind of broad at times I guess you know but it seems like um, hers is just she just freaks out in the city you know there's just too many people too many things around so she decides to go stay in this um, uh, this house that's off, way out in the country, uh, to get away from everything, just see if that can help her. Um, so her best friend Mark takes her out to this place, and um, they check it out. It's like an old, ran-down house. Um, excuse me. That's owned by uh, Colonel LeBrun, which is played by John Carradine, and. Um, Upon seeing Lauren, he, he just kind of freaks out and has a stroke, and he can't talk for a long time afterwards. And uh, it's just all very odd right off the bat. And the house that she's going to be staying in, it's very ran down, very fucking creepy looking, um, you know, typical haunted house look um, to it. And uh, so she stays there. Mark leaves. She stays there. And she starts hearing weird things happen around the house, and you know, soon after there there ends up being some violent deaths that happen. Um, you know, just all this crazy shits happening, and, and it's all you know revolves around the house basically. Um, and that's your that's your basic setup for the story. Um, but you know, guys, I have to say, you know, this is much more than just a typical haunted house story. It's it's a uh, part psychological thriller also I mean because you know it, it's definitely has a haunted house element and at first it starts off it looks like it's going to be just a full on straight haunted house story but there also gets to be a, a psychological element to it um, without spoiling too much um, you know Lauren does come to find out that the place used to be a brothel um, and it has a murderous past uh, there was a bloodbath that took place there uh, and all that kind of plays into the story. Um, but, you know, guys, I really enjoyed this film. Um, I really, I didn't know what to expect. Like I said, without hearing anything about it, I totally went into it blind. And, and I was I was pleasantly surprised by this. You know, I mean, it, this came out in 1981, and it has all the cliches of the, of the time, you know, where she looks in a window and sees somebody, and, and Mark that's with her at the time looks up, he doesn't see anything, stuff like that. Um, you know, but it's it still it's it's a very enjoyable film. It's it's very low budget. Um, you know, I really enjoyed the score to this also. Um, again, this, even the score is low budget and it's it's mostly minimal, but it does have some unique sounds and 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 I just like the musical cues in it. You know, it's got the 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 crazy like keys and stuff like the ring ring like kind of psycho type sound that pops up at times. Um, I really like the character of Abner. Um, he, he's kind of he kind of plays into the psychological thriller side of it uh, he's, he's just a, a local outcast that's uh, you know not all there by any means and um, you know Lauren has a or, yeah Lauren has a run-in with him and um, he's just he's fucking nuts <laughs> um, you know the rest of the cast you know is just kind of ho-hum uh, especially when it gets to Mark um, that guy is one of the worst actors. He's absolutely horrible. Thankfully, he's not in a lot, but just just some of his delivery of his lines is just ridiculously bad. Um, and, you know, John Carradine, God rest his soul, 
Um, he is just, he's bad. He's really bad. Um, especially like his last scene in the film. I mean, it, it's, it's going to make you laugh watching it. Uh, but it's still, you know, it's John Carradine. You know, at this point in, in his career, he could do whatever the hell he wanted. You know what I mean? I mean, and it seems like in this period of time, like if you go back and watch a lot of these lower budget horror films and you get a lot of these eight packs and stuff like that, you're always going to see John Carradine in something. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he's pretty bad in the movie, but still, he, there is a certain charm to him, I thought, also. Um, but, you know, the lead character, Lauren, uh, played by Robin Groves, as I mentioned, um, she does okay. Um, you know, the whole agoraphobe thing, I just, I had a hard time believing that, but, you know, I, you know the story, it, it, you know, stuff like that with these films, you know, you can't look too much into that. You just kind of have to go with the flow of it. Um, and that's what I did, and, and, and I enjoyed it. You know, I didn't overanalyze this film. To me, it was just a good, um, it was a good story. I mean, it, you know, or a good movie. The story could have been a little bit tighter, I thought, like, you know, as far as, like, not knowing if it wanted to be a ghost story or a psychological thriller. I mean, the elements didn't quite go together good enough to, to really consider this film a classic. But still, um, I think that I would consider this a lost gem from its time without a doubt um you know and this guy that directed uh armand weston um i did a little bit of research on this guy and found out that this is like the only feature film he ever did uh before this he just did like pornos <laughs> um and you know i think it's pretty amazing what he put together here uh for being the first film and as far as i know this is the only actual film he ever did um so, you know, it's a shame because he definitely showed some talent here. And, uh, you know, the problems with the film, like the story and all that stuff, I mean, that could, that could come from this being his first film. I'm sure it did, you know. Uh, I'm sure he had his limitations and all this stuff. And, and, you know, just basically going from filming fucking to filming something with an actual story. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's, you know, a big jump there. Um, but, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of really cool elements in this, you know, like with the haunted house and stuff that... I wish they just would have expanded on that a little bit more. Um, but some of the things, like when she hears these creepy sounds and stuff and she finds herself trapped out on the roof and stuff, like towards the beginning, I thought that that was very, very good. Um, it really captures the atmosphere there. Um, and then, you know, so, some of the stuff that goes on with, with the past of, of the story, I like that a lot. Um, like with the, uh, the the former prostitutes, the ghosts and stuff like that was pretty neat. And, uh, you know, also the character of Lauren, I, I really like some of the uh, surreal elements that, that, that there was in this, like with her uh, having these dreams and these visions. And uh, it kind of gets to a point, you know, with all of this where she doesn't really know if what she's seeing is reality or if it's a dream. Um, there's some very surreal elements here, you know, that mix what's going on presently in the story and what's went on in the past. And I really liked how um, it was filmed and how it was shot right there. I thought I thought that that stuff was really excellent. Um, but yeah, guys, you know, I'm not going to ramble on anymore. Um, people that like films from the 80s, from the early 80s, from this time are going to really enjoy this. I think it's kind of um, a step away from your cliched um, ghost story also, you know, I mean, because it has that psychological element, it kind of, it brings something new to the table um, that really, I can't think of anything out of this time period that was really seen like this. Um, so yeah, guys, the film, I give it a 7 out of 10. It's a really solid rating. Uh, I highly recommend checking this out. Um, it's a very enjoyable movie. You know, like I said, if you like ghost stories, psychological thrillers, um, just stuff that's kind of uh, surreal at times in the way it's shot. I mean, not a lot of surrealism in this, but still the elements, the, it, when, it, when it does hit, um, it's, it definitely leaves an impact, I thought. So, yeah, guys, I give this one a 7 out of 10. The picture quality on this, it's not too bad. I mean, considering, you know, low budget of the time and stuff like that, um, I thought it was pretty decent picture quality. I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10 for the picture. Um, now, one thing I will add in here while talking about the pictures, the sound on this was pretty bad. Um, like, at the beginning, it started off, you know, I had my TV turned up, you know, about halfway or so, you know, for my deaf ass. 
Um, and you could hear everything really well. Like, you know, I could hear all the dialogue, but then as it went along, like the dialogue got lower. I don't know, you know, what exactly happened with the audio in this, but the audio is not real good. And all of a sudden it would get blaringly loud again. So, I mean, that kind of hampers it. Um, but still, guys, the picture quality itself is it, pretty. Uh, now, the extras on this, there's there's nothing. It's pretty bare bones. I mean, your, your typical minuscule amount of extras, of just deleted and extended scenes, uh, theatrical trailers, TV spots, poster and still gallery. That's it. Um, so pretty disappointing. Um, you know, I wish Blue Underground would have put more into the extras of this. Maybe it just comes from it being an obscure film. You know, maybe they just didn't want to put a whole lot of work into this and, uh, you know, go the extra mile to do extra new interviews and all that stuff. It's a very good possibility. So extras, guys, I can only give it a 2 out of 10. I mean, you know, that's probably a little bit too much, but I'll give it a 2 out of 10 as far as the extras go on this. So, yeah, overall, guys, um, enjoyable film, great ghost story, psychological thriller. Um, you know, it has some cheesy, hammy acting at times, but still, it doesn't hamper the overall film. Um, I think a lot of you are going to enjoy this film and watch my channel. Um, give it a shot, guys. Uh, so, yeah, overall, I'll give this a 7 out of 10. Um, and this comes with a good uh, Beyond the Realms recommendation here, guys. So, yeah, thanks again, David Zombie Food 2, for this Blu ray. Awesome addition to my collection, brother. Appreciate it. Um, I'm sure everybody watching this, you can find this Blu-ray anywhere. I haven't checked, but I'm sure you can find it everywhere. I, I imagine it's probably relatively cheap also. So, yeah, guys, that is The Nesting. I am Jason. You have been watching Beyond the Realms. Have a good one.